Hey everybody, Melissa here. And today I'm gonna show you how to make some quick jump rings when you're in a pinch and also split rings to incorporate into your jewelry designs. So just stick with me and I'll show you how. So today I'm gonna to use 16 gauge wire. I like my jump rings nice and sturdy. So 16 to 18 gauge is what I usually use. So this is a quarter inch wooden dowel. As you can see, it's got notches in it. I've used it plenty of times for jump rings. You can use any size dowel you want, depending on how big you want your jump rings. The gauge wire I use, I tend not to go any lower than a 20. Let me quick show you. I wind my wire around my dowel. I wind it around really tight next to each other. Take them off. You can wind it however many times you would like because that just depends on how many jump rings you get. And also for this, you need a good pair of flush cutters. I'll cut it off where it's curved. So I have a nice coil here and then I go along my first cut one at a time off. I've tried sawing them. That's kind of a pain. But you got to keep in mind that one of your edges is going to be flush and one of your edges is going to be tapered. You have to go back and cut the other edge flush. Just like that. So you have two flush ends. And you can do that right away. Sometimes I forget to do that part and when I go to use them I have to, to cut them flush at that point. If you've got the time you can go through all of them and cut them flush. While we're at it I'll show you how to open and close a jump ring. Two chain nose pliers would be helpful. A bent one would be helpful too. So to open a jump ring you do it side by side or side to side like so. I'm gonna use my flat nose. To close them, I cut a nice portion of it off. So what I do is I come sideways and I kind of gently push them together. So they slightly overlap, as you can see. And then I come through and I close it. I might have to come back and push them down a little bit. There we are. I'll do one more. I'm going to push it closed slightly. Bring them back together. I push the, the one side up again so I come through and I kind of squeeze it down. So next I'm going to show you how I do my split rings. So split rings are kind of like jump rings but they're doubled up. If you're worried about your jump rings failing or, or being pulled apart then split rings are your go-to because they're much stronger than jump rings and I use split rings a lot in my designs. So let's get started. I'll show you really quick how to do those. Same technique. Grab a dowel. This is a quarter inch and you start winding it around just like you do the jump rings right from the spool. Try to get your coils nice and tight. 16 gauge is pretty tough, so you might have to use the pliers to flatten out your end pieces here. Either that or cut them off when you're done. Keep winding until you, you think you have enough split rings to get through your project. Okay, so I'm going to stop there. Sometimes I have to twist the dowel off or my rings off the dowel. So I'm going to cut my coil right where it starts to curve here. So about right there looks good. For jump rings, you cut straight across. For split rings, you actually split it apart a little bit and then you cut even with your first cut. To split it far enough to get your pliers in there, your cutters. Need to cut that flush. 
Bend this guy back into place. And there we are, there's a split ring. Make sure your ends are flush. You can always go back and file them if they're really sharp. But yeah, split them apart. Cut it off. Make sure both your ends are flush. And squeeze that back together. 16 gauge is pretty darn tough. You can cut them off first and then go back and straighten them up, whatever you feel like doing. All right. All right, there are your split rings. There we have it. Nice quick video this week. Hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe, hit that bell. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.